Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today we are at St. Mary's Episcopal Church Cathedral Road in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. With me is Wesley Parrott, the organist here. How long have you been uh, organist at this church? Just over 20 years. 20 years. And this is a Patrick J. Murphy and Associates organ. Uh, you were responsible for having it brought in and put in here? Well, it, the process began before I came to be organist here, but I'm happy to say that I was able to influence its uh, design and development. Well, let's talk a little bit about this instrument. Um, talk about its history a little bit. There's some older pipe organ, older parts of an older organ in here. Well, it started out as a five-rank unit organ by M.P. Moeller from Hagerstown, and those ranks are still here. Uh, they are the Gedeckt in the swell, the Gemshorn in the swell, the Spitz principal in the swell. They used to play at four and two, and uh, and then the um, uh, principal on the grate, which was uh, unit eight, four, and two, and the trompet, which was eight and four. So you had a few pipes doing a whole lot of work. Well, yes, very ranks. small. <laughs> uh, and those those ranks are all still here, but they're in a slightly different place and usually and really less unified for the most part. Well, let's start with that eight foot principal in the grate. Let's hear what that molar principal sounds like in the room. Well, the old molar principal is really oh. the four foot octave now. Patrick Murphy rescaled, uh, actually made a new uh, set of pipes, and I believe they were voiced by Jim Gruber. This is the base of the old molar. Okay. Ugly. Um, so, and then he's added the two foot too. He's also replaced that. Oh yes, that. yes. We have a, we have an independent uh, uh, now eight four two and two thirds and two. Plus we have a mixture which uh, is in the swell box for for greater expression here, and uh, that mixture is a two foot pitch, and the two foot principle from this uh, that's on the swell is from that mixture. Okay, so the mixture in the grate is actually made up of pipes that are in the swell box which gives you that ability to control that brightness yes. as well as having the ensemble. Yes. Show me a little bit of that. What's the difference between a closed mixture chorus and an open? Well, um, it goes very well with the swell reeds. For instance, uh, this, uh, we have just the reeds. Because they're all in one box together, then you can blend yes. them very well. Yes. So how does? Let's just listen. I want to hear the principal chorus by itself, though. So eight, four, two and two thirds, two foot, and swell mixture. Right. There's so our... first the great eight foot principal, four foot octave, twelve, two and two thirds, two foot fifteenth, and mixture. So then that's with the box open. So if you close the swell box, it would dull some of the brightness maybe? Or it is did, it just yes. Quiet? And shut. Mind you, you're sitting here underneath the organ, so you don't hear the biggest difference well, in the change in this. We don't hear. Hopefully those listening online Absolutely. can do because the microphones are out there picking yes. up the full organ. So You've got hopefully it, yeah. they've got the best idea. Good. Uh, what <laughs> else have we got in the grade? We have a stop diapason. Stop diapason at eight. That was uh, uh, one, uh, we say, recycled pipework from another organ. Four foot <clears throat> roar flute is another uh, recycled rank that's been slightly rescaled and has now stopped bases. It's got a brighter sound and a little more quinty than the stop back pace. And what do those sound like together then? Very bright, very colorful. And because the four foot is independent and the 16 is a unit with the eight foot stop die pace, you have a nice fat eight and two foot sound. And the stop die pacing at the moment 
well, until such future time as we had a bottom octave, borrows the bottom octave from the swell gedect. Oh, okay. So we can have that go all the way down if you need. Very nice. And then our reed in the grate is an eight-foot <coughs> trumpet. Yes, that's unenclosed. The trumpet, by the way, is an extension of the posaune in the pedal. So the two together uh, in the pedal at 16 and 8, and then on the grate at 8. So that's a big sound, big great sound. Those are Aeolian Skinner pipes. Are they? Yes. Wonderful. The well, cl clarinet is also enclosed in the swell. Oh, it's only available in the grate, but it's enclosed in the swell. Well, it's also available at four foot in the, pedal. In the okay. pedal down there. There's so. a solo lead there. Very nice big clarinet. I like it. And then, what would you accompany that with in the grate? So, or the swell? Maybe the gems horn and yeah, you know, gems horn and gedeck do very well. Or the strings, really hybrid gems horn and celeste. And if you want to thicken up the clarinet, you can add the uh, stopped up hasten or the gedeck. You can also add the Quintadina for color. We didn't talk about the Quintadina. Quintadina is a, a curious hybrid stop that's really very skinny, almost string scale, um, but caps on the top. So you get this lovely oh. antique sound. It's technically it's, a flute. And very different from the stop diapason, oh my. which is also a flute. It's capped. Quite a variety there in between those two. Yep. That's the Gedeckt and the Quintadina. That's almost a solo stop. You're almost like a colorful reed in that there's Definitely. so much brightness in it. Yes, in fact, uh, often when they uh, build treble pipes for a vox humana, they will be quintadina pipes. That's interesting. Now, I just want to mention you also have the, the Gemshorn Celeste as a pair, Gemshorn and Gemshorn Celeste on the grate. Yes. So that you have that if you want to accompany, you say, the oboe or uh, combination oh, yes. of swell stops. Yeah, so even just to be able to accompany uh, the Gedeck mm. using... Uh, that's the accompaniment, using the uh, solo as the spitz principle. Of course, you could do that on the uh, first organ here, but now uh, you can add a little bit more with the oboe, which we didn't have before. The larger uh, trompette will uh, accompany nicely with the stop diapason and the gedeck. We've gotten, gotten all those little different sounds out of just essentially four ranks. Uh, they're all placed in one box, but because you can divide them up and use them against each other, yes. uh, you get a lot of different color options mm -hmm. out of just a small number of pipes. And you still have more to go. You've actually got a lot in this swell. Um, let's um, go back to the Spitz principle. I want to hear a little more of that by itself. Just okay, to... now the bottom octave of it comes from two pipes, the Gedeck and the Gemshorn. Okay, so it starts at tenor C, but then... But it's about the same string. Yeah. And of course, it's a unit. 
So if you want independent stops, you can use uh, Gedeck 8, Gemshorn 8, Spitz Principle 4, um, and then and say you want a two-foot block flute. And that's not bright enough for you, so use the two-foot principle, which is the two-foot from the uh, mixture on the grate. Mm -hmm. And here's the one and a third, independent. The uh, block flute plays it four and two, and to be able to have it uh, complete <clears throat> in the bottom octave, we've borrowed in the block flute uh, from the gedeckt. Up an octave, so they yeah. go all the way down. And, uh, okay. and the same thing, we've borrowed the, uh, the bottom octave of the two and two thirds Nazard from the gedeckt. But the Nazard rarely is needed down there anyway, so you don't exactly. notice if it's a slightly yes. out of tune, that's and, a good way to borrow and it. Yet and uh, yet it all works very nicely. And we still have a tierce. We have one more rank in there. Okay, so color. that completes a nice cornet. Eight, four, two and two thirds, two, and tears. Accompanied by the stop diapason and the gedeck on the grate. you can take out the two foot and have a lighter uh, cornet and accompany it with a gedeck. Hope Just you. eight, four, two and two thirds and one and three fifths, yeah. similar to what you, well, most people would say a sesquialtera on their and then And then add the two foot, oh, or if you up. wanted to be Fatter, add the eight foot spitz principle, and then you can add both the eight and the four to accompany on the grade. So essentially the same style of colors and solo against accompaniment, but you've got all different levels just by adding and subtracting yes. a few little things here and there. Yes. And again, only 24 ranks total? Exactly. So uh, we're doing a whole lot with, we have, it's a good number of pipes, but they're used very well so that you can, you can put them in different places and do all sorts of interesting things. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the reeds in the swell. Now we have a 1684, is that a unit? Yes. Okay. The trumpet by itself. But here with a 16 and 4 foot. Unification. And you could even couple that with the great trumpet if you really wanted to make oh, something yes. big and bright. Just all the reeds by themselves on this organ make a nice, a nice presentation. Now there you threw on the Miller tuba. Talk about that. Well, first of all, who is Miller? Oh, a lovely lady named Ann Miller lived next door at Cathedral Village, a retirement community. And when she died, uh, then three, her three children gave the stop in her memory. And I think only one of those children is still living. Wow. But it cost us over $30,000 to add that stop, oh, 15, tw wow. almost 20 years ago. Well, it's a high-pressure hooded trumpet, so it, a little more in the construction, and it needs an extra blower to get the, the yeah, wind up. I wouldn't say high pressure. It was seven inches or oh. so. And the reeds sound. from the swell against the uh, the tuba. Lovely. Now let's talk about the pedal just a little bit to see what's independent, what's borrowed, what do we have? All right, we have one rank of pipes unified in the pedal. 
Uh, it was the original four-foot gems horn in the choir division at Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and it's been turned all the way into a 16 So now. here you are. It's pretty... It's now called chorale bass. It's louder than... Unified at four, of course, and two, eight, sixteen, and a thirty-two foot resultant with itself. It's an effective sound in here, and this room is. comes around. And then everything else is a borrow from something else on the on the on the greater swell, which gives you lots of piano and forte options to to color those those stops with. Exactly. Uh, the uh, gems horn is from the swell at eight, the stop tie pacing at eight, the roar flute borrows the roar flute from the grate at four, and uh, then you've got the posaune at uh, 16, also the trumpet uh, on the grate from eight, those are the same rank. You've got the swell trumpet at 16, and you've got the clarinet at four, so you have a lovely possibility for, for doing um, melodies. Nice. You Very could also play the oboe against the clarinet mm -hmm. if you're accompanying it on this on something else, uh, different effect. Wesley, you're one of my favorite types of organists in that you don't see all these stops as just the voices you have to turn on for solos and accompaniment, but you know how to blend them and add one against each other. So many organists I meet will say, oh, I only have one solo stop, I just have an oboe. But an oboe plus a principle is something else, an oboe plus a, a larigo is a completely new stop, and I like sure. the way you color things against each other and you make more mm -hmm. out of this than what you really have sometimes. counted seven different types of oboes you invented there by creating other colors and adding to it. Thank you. 
stairs leading up into the chamber. They're very cozy. chamber door. This goes into the swell. And here we are in the swell. Pedal pipes along the back. We have a dehumidifier. At least we should need that. In front here is an oboe. Then I see a clarinet back there. Then our upper work for the swell, mixtures and mutations. There's our Gims horns. Gims horn or Gims horn Celeste? That one's the Gims horn. The Gims horn Celeste is back here. And then the trumpet out front, I assume so you can reach through and tune it through the shades, or you have to crawl under. Hmm. Some eight foot stops over here. And the large regulator, and then there's an older one there. The shades go all the way to the floor. From the swell, we have a door that leads us out into what looks like old pedal pipes. Huh, there's how we reach. our gems horn and you can tune the swell trumpet through the shades our blower is back here covered up and all the swell motor and rectifier are on this side and there are the 16 foot there some flutes on this side and let's go back and check out the grate. So we've come up the ladder and we're in the grate. Uh, the first thing we see is this trumpet right here, which has some little protective covers on it. The uh, ceiling of this building is unfinished. So dust and plaster can fall down into it. And that's just a nice preventative measure to keep dirt out of the pipes. And there's the grate regulator. And it feeds into this step-up blower, which through that regulator winds the Miller tuba, this hooded tuba that's along the back wall. And there's the bottom of the trumpet over there. And the rest of those pipes in their little nook. And we can see out into the church, the other alcove.
Well, Wesley, thank you so much for showing us this wonderful Patrick Murphy instrument. It's very versatile. You have a lot of colors in 24 ranks, all mm -hmm. in this wonderful room. I should actually ask you to tell us a little bit about this room because it's unique. Ooh. The room itself is all that was built of the Lady Chapel, not even a, a complete Lady Chapel, at the east end of a giant cathedral that was never built. They started the project probably 20, 25 years too late. The stock market crashed and this is all that they accomplished. This, this would have, if this was just the chapel, this would have been a gigantic cathedral, no doubt, because this <laughs> is a pretty big little side chapel, but yes. it makes for a perfect acoustic space for this organ, uh, and I think works well. Remember, for streaming organ music 24 hours a day, visit our three stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. And to get notifications of future videos, remember to subscribe to this one and click the thumbs up button if you liked it. I thank you again for watching. I'm Brent Johnson. I'll see you next time.